At the end of the last video, we talked about whether Jesus is a created being. She presented her arguments but wasn't able to convince me. So she then decided to focus on getting into the theme of the Bible. That's where we pick up here. Like if we understand the theme of the Bible, to you what is the theme of the Bible? The Why did God the write the Bible for us? He, he gave us the Bible to reveal himself through Christ. For his but he glory. revealed himself before Christ. Yep, absolutely. The entire Old Testament is pointing to Christ. Every single thing is pointing to Christ in the Old Testament. And why is the Bible pointing to Christ? Because it, to glorify him, because he came to save us. Everything is about him. The whole purpose of creation is Christ. And why do we need saving? Because we are fallen sinners who rebel when against did we become fallen sinners? well we fell in adam and originally in adam and eve but we are all we are all born with sin nature we are all naturally in rebellion right. to our creator yeah. so that's the theme of the bible that's the theme sure. of the bible yeah and we can get all of that absolutely right from the beginning from, from adam's failure right to revelation is the revealing of how Mankind will be revealed, will be redeemed. Yes, in Christ. And, and what, what did Christ come to the earth for? He came to save those that the Father gave him. Do you want to read uh, uh, Luke 4 and uh, 43? Okay, so you want to talk about the kingdom. That's cool. So he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Can you, I didn't quite hear that. Would you read that again for me? Sorry. He said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Yeah. So what was his purpose to for they to come to the earth? Oh, to proclaim the kingdom, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And what is the kingdom? The kingdom is that of Christ, Christ's people. The new Jerusalem. He came, the kingdom is, is the people that Christ came to save. And what is, and how is that going to come about? Well, through his death and resurrection, he has accomplished the salvation of, of the ones the Father gave him. And that will culminate at the end. We know that when he returns. Because the, the, if, if you read in, um, in Isaiah, it talks about that king being a king of a government. It, when it talks about the, 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 the Christ being born, the, the prophecy about Christ mm -hmm. being born. Right. And it speaks about that prince being running a government. And the government is... is okay, hey, let's go there then. What was that, Isaiah, you said? It's in uh, Isaiah 11, I believe it is. Oh, no, Isaiah 9, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Which verse? Well, verse, uh, <laughs> <laughs> verse 6 to uh, about um, 36, 6 and 7. Okay, can you read that one in your translation? <laughs> For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and the rulership will rest on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. To the increase of his rulership and to peace, there will be no end. Mm -hmm. On the throne of David and on his kingdom, in order to establish it firmly and to sustain it through justice and righteousness, for now, on, and forever. The seal of Jehovah of armies will do this. Mm -hmm. 
An interesting thing that I didn't point out at this time is where the Bible calls Jesus Everlasting Father. Literally, what it means is Father of Eternity. We both agree that it's not saying Jesus is the Father. It's saying he created time and existed before time, just as we see in John 1, 1 to 3. That's a pretty cool thing to point out to Jehovah's Witnesses, so keep that in mind if they bring up this passage. Right? So that is definitely the coming kingdom? Mm-hmm. That's, huh? that's the, the prophecy of Christ Jesus and his commission, his, what his purpose was, mm-hmm. to come to the earth. And notice that he would, that it was that through the line that was part of the prophecy that on the throne of David, which then later prophecies came through that. Right. Through the, they the were the types uh, and shadows. You know, times yeah. it would be uh, fulfilled that it would be through David's line and through Jesus would be born through right. David's line, through the line of Judah. Yes. So it took centuries to reveal that. Right. Yeah, we agree on that. So then, yeah. then the, so we're, we are agreed that Jesus came to the earth to talk about that kingdom. I should have stopped her right there. Jesus came to talk about the kingdom? No, Jesus is the king. He came to save sinners. He came to reveal Jehovah to us in his own person. And those who are saved are the kingdom. Whenever I hear Jehovah's Witnesses talking like this, it reminds me of the Jews in those days who were waiting for a human king to come and overthrow Rome, restoring the literal, physical kingdom of Israel. Most of them didn't see the larger true story that was unfolding before their eyes. The Watchtower keeps its followers in that same perspective, refusing to see the fullness of the spiritual reality that we have in Christ. Because that kingdom, which is in all of his ransom, so belief in the ransom is not enough because the ransom is part of the kingdom arrangement. This is more Watchtower lingo. There is no kingdom arrangement in the Bible. You may notice that they use the word arrangement quite a bit. It's part of their training. Also, they are trained to throw the word ransom around quite often, regardless of what is being discussed. The Watchtower's definition of ransom is also different from the Bible's. For them, Adam was a perfect man who sinned and put us into debt. Jesus was a perfect man who died to bring us back to a kind of neutral state so that we can maybe be part of the kingdom if we do enough works. For them, the ransom accomplishes nothing, but only provides a possible opportunity. For them, Christ's righteousness is not imputed to those who believe in him. That's why they have to keep doing all the field service and going to all the meetings, which is their definition of what they call exercising faith. And that's the whole big picture, and that's the theme of the Bible, that that kingdom, because Jesus died, that king died to be, to purchase our life back so we could live in that kingdom, and that's a government that will have representatives from earth in heaven to overrule mankind, and that will last for a thousand years, which is revealed in Revelation, and then in in First Corinthians, it says that after a thousand years, Jesus will turn that king- kingdom over to Jehovah, and then paradise will be restored, and we will then be actual children of God like Adam was. And that's the theme of the Bible. So, okay, that, that's interesting about Revelation. So uh, do you think that most of the, um, the, ner- the numbers used in Revelation are symbolic? The numbers? Yeah. Some numbers are, but the numbers, the, the number of 144, because it contrasts with the great crowd that is unable to be numbered. Okay, but how, how does it contrast? It, it looks to me like it's, um, like he says he heard... Because the, the 144 is precise, whereas in that same chapter, the great crowd is not numbered. Right, but when, okay, 
sorry, what do you remember? What I'm sure you know. Which chapter is that again? In yeah, chapter seven. Chapter seven. Okay. Thanks. I'm terrible with numbers. Um, he says this is interesting. Like, have you ever um, noticed how Revelation goes in cycles? Like, it's basically looking at the same thing from different angles as you read through the chapters. The Revelation? Yeah. It, it, let's just go back to the beginning of, of Revelation 1, and it, it'll explain what Revelation is. Right, it's the revelation of Jesus. It's the revelation but that's, of Jesus. I'm, I'm talking more about the format of Revelation, though, like the way that it's written. It has a, you know, like different books of the Bible have different styles, right? Like, you know, some are poetry, some are songs, some mm -hmm. are historical but, narrative. But, but verse 1 explains the, the reason for the writing of Revelation. Right, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, it does. So that's, it's a, it's a revelation that Christ Jesus gave to John, but Jehovah God gave it to Jesus before that. <laughs> okay. If you read verse we're, 1. We're kind of going sideways here. Um, I'm talking about, if we just do a, a, a quick look at Revelation as the whole book of Revelation. Well, let's just establish... Who, what, what, who wrote it, to, you know? Right, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ is given to John, we know that. Yeah, and who gave it to Jesus? So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God keep, gave him to show the bondservants, his bondservants, etc. Yes, that's fine. Uh, that's not my point, though. Um, well, but, so there's a progression there. Sure, but... So God gave it to Jesus, and Jesus gave it to John. And okay. John wrote it. Okay. Still right. no, nothing to do with so what we're talking about. So that means that there, there's no individuals. They're all individuals, and they're not. They're two individuals. For, the first two individuals couldn't be related as one because one had to give it to the other one. Well, you're you're separating the the same essence versus the same. Um, There's what? Uh, the, the the same. They, they're the same essence, but they don't operate exactly the same. They have individual purposes. Well, don't we read? Don't we read what we read? I mean, we don't. We don't have to decipher what we read. That's just. But that's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, can, can, I'm wondering. Maybe maybe this is too much to to ask, but. Um, what I'm what I'm trying to look at is just when we when we look at the book of Revelation and definitely we look at the beginning we look at who it's given by who it's recorded by all those sorts of things but when we look at the type of writing that re the book of Revelation is this is called it's called apocalyptic literature have you heard that term before yeah what's apocalyptic it means time at the end right but it's a writing style that was popular in John's day. So he wrote it in that style with all kinds of wild symbolism, right? That, there was a purpose for that, that they understood in the early churches. We don't have to understand why it was written. We just have to understand the, what right. is written. Right, exactly. And so part of that is we look at what, how did the early church understand this when he used, you know, a lot of these terms. I don't care how the early church understand it. Well, I well, that's interesting. Why not? My line of reasoning was so far outside of her watchtower training that you probably noticed how she kept trying to redirect to her more familiar thought process, even trying to deflect with a claim that Revelation 1 verse 1 is saying Jesus is not God. Thankfully, I didn't take the bait and tried my best to stay on topic. In the next video, you'll hear a lot more of that as I try to get her thinking about the entire genre of the book of Revelation and how it was understood by its original hearers and readers. It was an interesting exercise, but I'm not sure how much of what I said even registered with her as she was so busy trying to deflect to her training instead of listening to my reasoning.